Linux has a decentralized supercomputer platform that is transforming and disrupting both the supercomputing and the software industries. And with me is Clifford Mapp, an independent expert and blockchain pioneer to talk about this. So I guess let's just start, Clifford, what is Dynex all about? Uh, it, the best way to put it is that the, the, the aspect of supercomputing is usually very restricted to a handful of companies, handful of individuals. Um, Dynex aims to make it a single philosophy of what of what we run is uh, supercomputing for everyone. And obviously, the idea behind supercomputing behind, uh, be, for everyone, right, is that no matter whether you're a small individual independent person all the way up to a global 2000 company, Dynex can facilitate everyone basically that that is the whole mantra of dynex is supercomputing for everyone yeah well um i mean i'm sure many many people could benefit from this how do you do that how do you bring supercomputing to the masses sure so it all starts with obviously the the neuromorphic network that's wrapped inside of a blockchain technology um to to make that a little bit simpler is to think of it like one big gigantic computer but spread all over the world so no matter wherever you are it should be very easily accessible to you um the whole idea is to solve computational problems and obviously the one way we want to do that is to make sure that the resources are available for everyone whether that be you know utilized in in society for societal problems medical issues uh, and medical technologies, automotive and, and that kind of industries. But realistically, there is no industry that that really we we haven't looked at and, and said we could we could do something with it. Yeah. Well that was I was gonna ask what would be the applications and how would um, an average person benefit from having a supercomputing power? Well, that, that's that's probably one of the biggest questions I get asked. What what can you do with a super supercomputer, right? So, a supercomputer, in essence, is just a really big PC, right? To to break it break it down to the fundamentals, it's just a really gigantic PC. But the costs involved when it comes to how much that that infrastructure costs um, usually stops the smaller companies being able to utilize them because they don't have that kind of budget. Um, or you find that it's it's sort of centralized around three or four big supercomputers. I believe America's got three or four, China's got a couple, the UK's got one, uh, a couple in Europe as well. But realistically, there's not many of them. So the idea behind what Dynex is doing by, by allowing everyone access to utilize it is really make it the entry to bar uh, the, the barrier to entry, should I say, um, okay. for using it is so low now that realistically it's going to mean that other companies are going to have to reassess how they also do supercomputing. Hopefully, you know, as we say, it, it's a very disruptive technology and disruptive technologies tend to move that barrier around and cause other companies to have to bring their barrier down as well and if that if that's the way it works that's the way it works but the the difference between say for example dynex compared to say an existing traditional supercomputer that's where it gets really very competitive is because whereas they've got massive overheads Dynex's overheads is only what their um, uh, people supplying their decentralized hardware and infrastructure actually use and pay. So really, the the cost overhead is is far less on Dynex compared to a traditional supercomputer. Interesting. And there's also a coin, the Dynex coin. Yeah. So explain that, how it's different than other cryptocurrencies. Um, how, what would you use it for? Sure, absolutely. Um, so 
Dynex obviously is the company that that runs the network, the supercomputer. The Dynex coin is is part of the ecosystem for the blockchain side of it, right? And that's where it's a, a very different uh, approach than say your traditional cryptocurrencies. Traditional cryptocurrencies like your Bitcoins, your Ethereum's, those are all transactional based. And we've seen it with Ethereum slowly wrapping up applications on their blockchain. Dynex takes it to even a higher degree than that effectively, because instead of many, many applications, and then you're scrambling to try and figure out which applications work, which don't, and having all of that fun trying to figure that one out, Dynex's idea of, of the supercomputer and, and making it available to everyone is that basically they're, they're, they're laser focused on one specific goal, and that's supercomputing. And it, it means that the ecosystem has been wrapped around that. So the Dynex coin itself is, is the part that basically is the mechanism that pays for the computation. So think of it more like a computational credit at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and when all of that goes in, the, the people supplying the, the hardware on chain, um, they receive rewards for the, the supercomputing that's being run. So it, it's a, what we call a, a cycle, our cycle ecosystem, right? Is that it starts at the client turning up on the marketplace to book their job. That then gets passed into the system. It then comes around and is then paid for the, the computation. That get paid back to the people supplying the hardware. And that then obviously goes around in a big cycle. So it's it's a full blown ecosystem at this point. Yeah. No, it sounds like, and it's the currency that kind of makes the whole thing run. Exactly. You understand that, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And it, it's not just like, you don't just have to use the Dynex coin. Mm -hmm. um, what you can do, uh, and this is something that they've just started to wrap up now is, is their, what they call their fiat on-ramp or their, their money aspects, right? So a lot of companies won't like to go and have to deal with the, the going to an exchange, buying the cryptocurrency. It gets a little convoluted when it comes to big corporations having to deal with it as well. So they're actually working on a method to uh, allow and, and make it very easy for you to be able to just top it up with a normal bank account, for example, or a Visa, a debit card or a, or a credit card. Um, all those kind of aspects will make the ecosystem a lot more easier to to manage for big corporations that most times um, and speaking from experience is that they don't want to mess around with that. They just want to put their card on file and pay for it as they use it. And that is what Dynex is aiming to, to achieve now. And what about the marketplace and how does that fit into the Dynex ecosystem? Yeah, the marketplace is like the central hub. Think of it like that. The central hub is, so it, it deals with things like the, the the registration of your of your details to gain access to the supercomputing and that is available the 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 system is open and available for registrations um obviously once you've done that you you then top up your account um once you're topped up and it's all running then it's just as simple as following the on-screen instructions and away you go um, obviously, if you've only got an idea and you haven't got the coding expertise, Dynex now has a whole team of experts that are registered within the system that you can actually supply your idea. They'll give you a price on how much it will cost to have made. And basically, you'll have it have the code done for you. So it really does make it accessible for everyone. And speed, I know, is a big issue and becoming very important to users. How is the speed with the Dynex supercomputer compared to? Uh, I mean, that's that's something really that we're we we've failed to really completely max it out yet because what we've found is obviously the more hardware that comes on on the network on the chain, um, it really keeps going up exponentially. So the more that there is, the more that it can support dealing with the parallel jobs. Uh, parallel clients uh, so far we've we've run well in excess of you know 
50,000 jobs by now and all of the testing phase, there was tons of jobs being run simultaneously. And when we were, when we were back before it publicly launched, um, you know, the, the network as a whole wasn't even as big as it is today. So we don't know where the limits are just yet. And every time we think we're, we're at the limit, obviously more hardware comes online and suddenly the, the bar's moved again. So really the, the, the best bit about that is that it gives them enough capacity to really go head to head with, with your IBMs, your Googles, your Amazons, mm -hmm. and even your traditional quantum computing companies like D-Wave. So it really is, you know, they're gonna they're gonna go gonna make some waves very soon and and believe you me i would be very surprised if it doesn't mean that a lot of these bigger companies have to think about how they now look at supercomputing too very interesting uh, are there particular sectors um that your dynex is focusing on well that's that's where it gets really interesting right because there isn't any sector that uses any form of supercomputing at all could potentially have their code adapted to run on Dynex. So, you know, that's things like uh, medical sectors, which we've we've already um, looked into and and tested a few different things, which is pretty impressive, like things like medical imaging, right? So being able to take a medical image and diagnose it within a few minutes compared to a few days, a few weeks, a few months. Um, doing blood work, for example, being able to screen stuff. It like medical applications are massive on, on Dynex's network. Um, but that's not just the only sector. They're looking at automotive. Um, they're looking at smart city planning, which is another one that really fascinates me because you know, traffic patterns, for example, they, they push those through supercomputers every day and it takes days and days and days. And you think if they could run that in a matter of hours, suddenly, you know, traffic patterns that might not be predicted for, for weeks, months, years on end can now be run in a matter of minutes. Mm. Uh, very interesting. I I'm also interested in the smart cities because I feel like there's so much efficiency there with waste pickup and parking. Well, I mean, there's just so many things. Exactly. And you think, right, that you might want to simulate what a road might be like for a traffic volume over 50 years. Mm -hmm. There's no way to technically do that in real time, right? Because 50 years is a long duration. But what if you could simulate it 50 years in real time? in a matter of minutes, you could tell whether a road is wide enough. Does it have enough, you know, pedestrian walkways? Does it have enough pedestrian crossings? Does it need a bridge instead? Or does it need an underground pass sort of thing? Because you know that within the next 20 years, it's going to get really busy with, with busier roads becomes more danger for the pedestrian side of things. So you might want to preempt that now. And we've seen it over in, um, oh, where is it? Um, just outside of, I think somewhere outside of China, there's there's a couple of cities that are being tested with that kind of idea in mind, where they're built and there's there's barely any population there, but the roads are seven lanes wide because they're forecasted over the next you know 20 years that that's how much they need to deal okay. with that volume of traffic, and it, it it's going to save them a fortune long term. And that's, you know, that's something else that really interests me. Yeah. And make sure they can accommodate the growth that's expected. Exactly. And speaking of growth, uh, growth in supercomputing um, yep. is, has been huge and is expected to be even more enormous. In oh, yeah. Um, is Dynex able to meet that demand? That's a very good question. Um, we, we hope we can. Um, we hope that the way that we we've got it scaled in such a way that you know the more hardware we we have on the network and on chain that it will obviously exponentially grow with us but there is always potential that we you know there could be a massive run on the need for supercomputing in the next couple of years and suddenly what we forecast wasn't big enough now obviously that's always a risk but we believe that we put ourselves in the best place possible 
in order to grow uh, with the needs of our clients, right? So as more clients come on, the more the more the network will be, you know, pushing out those rewards. It it will entice more people to put their equipment on that they've got lying around. And therefore, that then grows the Dynex network at the same time. So, realistically, um, you know the the price of Dynex, uh, the Dynex coin itself, right? It's it's over eight thousand percent higher than where it started already, and it's only been just under eighteen months. And that's that's impressive, like scaling already, but that doesn't quite cover it all because, yes, it was publicly launched 18 months ago but there's been nearly five years of active development right in dynex and that's to me shows how important they feel this this setup is that they worked on it behind the scenes for nearly four years before they even sort of showed it to the world and now they're sort of you know, getting to a point where what's next, you know, that that's that's that whole next conversation that everyone wants to know what comes next with with, you know, building an, an ecosystem out that that scales massively. You know, we're so used to traditional computing. Oh, we've got a PC. It's a it's a box here that we can see it. We can understand it. Right. But when you turn around and explain Dynex grows as there's more people on the network, that it's very hard to to you know relate to that because right now it might you know you might have it this big, but in a week's time it might be this big, you know, and suddenly you're in that realm of people can't get the scale, and that's the that's you know something that I've spent a lot of time explaining to people is that. Dynex is very unique compared to your normal traditional. So, yeah. Very interesting. Um, and you mentioned you're what, about 18 months old. Um, yeah. So, um, how has the company evolved in that time since the launch? Sure. So, uh, right at the very beginning, um, Dynex was, you know, a team of maybe 10 people. They're now a team of over 30 so they've they've grown in a very short period of time. Uh, it's all self-funded. It was it was all fair launched because obviously we we wanted to make sure that there was no no leveraging some sort of you know hidden agenda from one side of you know from a client or something like that. But realistically, the the, the public launch was where they really knew that they could deliver the supercomputing for everyone until they were really a hundred percent sure that it was even possible. They, they weren't prepared to publicly launch it. So being that they've only been up 18 months open to the world and the marketplace, for example, for onboarding clients has only been open since the 13th of December, um, last year, the, you know, now is the time where we'll start to see that exponential growth, not just from users and clients using it, but also exponential growth for Dynex itself. We're going to see the ecosystem become more mature. We're going to see, you know, the network grow and become bigger and therefore take on even bigger projects. So, I mean, I'm really looking forward to the next six to 12 months, to say the least. No, that sounds like there's going to be a lot. Sounds like it's moving very fast, and it's a lot of exciting things oh. that are happening. Um, okay, so Clover, finally, I give us an, an outlook. Y you talked a little bit about speed and growth. I mean, what's what's kind of right in front of you? What is the the next few things you'd like to accomplish? Yeah, on? I mean, it's it's probably the 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 one thing that really excites me is when people go, well, so what's coming next, right? And I may be a little bit more lucky than most because I get to to hear about the things that are coming next. But like, there are so many extra bits that we want to push the boundaries of. There's there's potential for even going for some world record attempts at supercomputing, and that that's going to be a uh, another one that really sort of wakes up the the standard industry in supercomputing and and makes them take a look at what Dynex is doing. Because 
the moment you break a world record, suddenly people know who you are, right? So, and and then you get, well, if they can do it, why can't we? And, you know, we go around in circles of how, how do they do it? How do we, you know, match that speed and efficiency? And the the benefit with, with Dynex, you know, and their, their team of developers, it's not just like one person developing this, this is a full team now, um, you know, and they're some of the most, um, you know, savvy people that I've met in a long time. They, they are they are laser focused on one goal and one goal only and that's to make sure that Dynex is as good as it can be as efficient as it can be and as easy to use for everyone because if it's not easy to use for everyone no one will use it right that it's a it's a fundamental principle in Dynex is that supercomputing for everyone and they, they mean it like they they won't release an update unless it makes sense for everyone using it okay well that makes sense and that's what makes great companies is that they have this mass appeal and they're intuitive and easy yes, so, exactly oh clifford thank you so much fascinating to hear this discussion i can't wait to get updates wonderful thank you very much <laughs>